Hello, all my art friends. How are y'all today? I hope everybody is well. Um, I haven't done a paint along in a couple of weeks, so I thought I would do one real quick today for you. Um, I did a painting a couple of weeks ago that I, I, I call them sacred stones. So think something like Stonehenge and rock formations and things like that. And I thought this might be fun to do a quick little paint along because there's there's a fun way to get um, the texture, look, and shading on the rocks that really isn't a terribly hard technique. It, it's certainly not the only technique, but my whole purpose in doing these paint along videos is to, to give you um, techniques that aren't terribly difficult to get you started maybe with watercolor or to pick up watercolor if you haven't in a long time or to try something different with what you're doing. So I thought doing something like this might be fun today. I'm not going to do, we're not going to do quite this big. I just wanted to show you where the idea came from. So I'm going to set that one aside. I'm going to work on a smaller piece of paper today. Zoom that in a little bit. This one is a five by seven. It is 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. The difference between hot press and cold press is the texture. So this one is fairly smooth. It doesn't have um, the roughness that you typically see on watercolor. And I don't have, I don't have a piece of cold press out here that I can show you the, the texture difference, but hot press is fairly smooth. You can use either. This is just what I happen to have cut already to the size that I wanted today. So hot press or cold press really doesn't make any matter any difference um, 140 pound or heavier is best because we are going to be putting water on here so um, the heavier the paper the less it will buckle and warp as you're using the water um, for what we're going to paint today i'm going to use two different watercolor sets i've got one from artistic isle um, she's got a brown that i really like and this lighter one is called Buff Titanium. It's kind of a really light taupe. Um, the brown one is called Sand. And there's a couple of metallics that I might use. So I'm going to use Artistic Isle. And then I'm also going to use my Prima Marketing Tropical set because there's also a brown in this set that I like. So I'm going to use two different browns and that kind of light tan color to make my rocks today. If all you have is one brown, that's completely okay um, because the, the nice part of watercolor is that you can get different degrees of shading and darkness of your paint by how much paint you use on the paper. If you go a really, really light wash of paint, you're going to have a lighter shade of the color. If you go a darker loading of paint, you're going to have a darker shade. So even if you only have one brown, um, you can certainly do that just very how much paint you're actually using on the different rocks. You could also mix black or white with the brown to get different shades of the brown as well. So you don't necessarily have to have two different sets and two different browns. These just happen to be two that I really like, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, I've got some water standing by over here. I've got a pencil to do a little quick drawing with. I've got two different brushes to use. I don't know which ones I'm going to use yet. It depends on how much, how big my rocks end up being. This one is the number eight that I love so much. And this one, I think, is a number three. So um, two different sizes of round brush. And my beloved Sharpie to do some outlining and embellishing with when we're done. Um, I'm not going to do really intricate drawing. That's part of the point in some of these is, is to get you... Um, actively creating without having the fear of drawing holding you back. So to do this one today, we're just going to do kind of a, a little pile of rocks off to the side. You can do yours whichever direction you want to. I've got mine portrait, so the long side is up. And I'm going to stack my rocks kind of this direction. So to get us started, I'm going to pencil in real lightly. And I know you probably can't see it on camera. I'm, I'm actually going to do most of the drawing with my Sharpie just because it shows up better for you guys. But I am going to put just a little tiny pencil line right across here real lightly because I want to have a ground line. This is where um, the ground is going to be that my rocks are sitting on. And you'll notice before I get too far that I do have my paper taped down today. It's just like a, a little bit of a, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch border that I've taped it down. So when I pull this off, there will be a little bit of a white border around it. That's the look I was going for. So with 
my little ground line in there. I'm going to go and draw me a couple of rocks. Now, rocks don't have any um, really specific shape. So before I draw on my good one. So when we're drawing rocks, you're good, just going to kind of do them loosely. If the outlines are wiggly, that's great. You can even make little marks in them to make it look like that would be a fissure in the rock where the rock is cracked. Um, we might do some round rocks. We might do some long skinny rocks. I think like the header rocks at Stonehenge. Um, you can do your rocks tall and skinny. So we're just going to kind of use some random shapes for our rocks, which is nice because it's not real drawing heavy this way. There's not anything that has to be absolutely perfect. Now the look I'm going for, you can put your rocks wherever you want them, but the look I'm going for is to have a little stack of rocks over here that kind of goes up the side. So I'm going to start over here and I'm not going to go quite all the way to the tape. Um, I'll actually change my mind. Yes, I am because I want it to look like they're kind of going off the page. So I'm going to start, I don't know, maybe right here. And I'm just going to draw me a fairly good sized rock. And when I get down to my little ground line down here, I'm going to run right along that ground line. Okay. It's not even the, the borders aren't symmetrical. It's not perfect because rocks aren't perfect. And I want to have, I want to have a longer one on top of here. So I'm just going to kind of come up like this and make a longer rock come across and touch the top of this one. Notice I am rounding my corners. I'm not making them 90 degree angles because rocks, they, they kind of flow and go with each other. So I want this to be a little bit rounded. I do want this to have something to sit on so it doesn't look like that that one's trying to balance out there so I'm gonna come and put another rock over here only I'm gonna make this one a little bit skinnier at the top fatter at the bottom and again at the bottom I'm just going along my ground line so now I look like I've got two rocks with one on top I do want to put something in here I don't want to leave that open so I'm gonna come in here and just kind of make another little rock that fits in there now you'll notice I didn't just draw a line across here and a line across here because that it wouldn't have been um, an organic rock shape. So I put my line here, but then I kind of curve my corners down here so it looks like they're sitting together, but they're not exactly um, fit together like a puzzle piece. And I'm going to go ahead and put one more in here. I'm going to put a round one or round-ish. doesn't have to be perfectly circular. Okay. And then I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to put another rock that's tall and skinnier at the top. On this one, where it sits against the flat rock, I'm going to come up and put just like a little whoopee in it. It kind of makes it look like a little fissure in the rock or a crack. You could do that anywhere in any of these rocks. Maybe I want to put another one right here. So I'm just drawing a line down and then making a little black spot there, coloring it in. To make it look like it's a little bit cracked. If you want that crack to come down further, just draw it down further. Okay, and I'm going to draw another kind of little square-ish rock over here and maybe another round one and then maybe just a couple little random shaped guys down over here. So with that, I have a pile of rocks. Um, nothing, like I said, nothing is symmetrical. Nothing is even because rocks aren't. So you don't have to worry about getting the shape of your rocks perfect as you do it. Okay. These rocks are pretty good sized. So I think I'm going to use my number eight brush and I'm going to start with, um, this one in the, the Prima marketing set is a little bit of a darker brown. So I'm going to start with that one. And as I tend to do, I'm just going straight to the palette. I'm not mixing the color out here first. And I'm going to start with this great big rock. And I'm just going to paint it in. And you'll notice I did not put any water on this first. This is a wet on dry technique that I'm doing. 
And I'm really not worrying about my color being even because the color in rocks isn't even. So I'm just flopping some color on there, moving it around. So just by splopping it on there and kind of moving it around, you can see that it gives it a little bit of a texture look already. I want it to have a little more texture, so I'm going to rinse off my brush and get just water on it. And I'm going to come back and just tap it to the rock. So you get a little bit of a, a splop of water here and there. And I think the light in my studio is blocking what that's doing, unfortunately. Let me see if I can hold this up for you. Can you see where I where I touched and those little splops are? And now it's running because I'm holding it up. That's fine. It's just going to give my rock more texture. So when that dries, it's going to give it a really uneven look to it, which is what we want. Rocks don't have an even color finish. Okay. I'm going to... Um, I'm not going to go right next to this rock. I'm going to come to a different rock because I don't want my colors to run together. So I'm gonna give that one just a little minute to dry. So I'm gonna go in and get some brown from my other set, the Artistic Isle set. It's her sand color. And I'm gonna come over here and use the sand color. And I'm doing just essentially the same thing. I am just going straight to the palette, splopping some color on. and spreading it around. I don't care that it's even. I don't want it to be even because I want the texture. So you can see that brown is just a little bit lighter. It's a little bit of a different shade of brown. But again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna wash my brush off and come back and just dot it here and there with just water on the brush to make those, those little water blooms go out that's gonna give it some texture. Okay, I'm essentially going to do that same thing for all my rocks. I'm going to use different thicknesses of paint. So for instance, I might come back to the tropical set and I might, I might make this rock really dark and you can see the difference in that one and this one. It's the same color of paint. The only difference is I've just really loaded up the brush a whole lot more and putting down a thicker coat of the paint rather than a lighter wash. And again, I came up here to do this one so that I can give those two a chance to dry just a little bit. So when I was talking earlier about getting different shades of brown to make your rocks a little bit different, even if you only have one color of brown paint, this is how you do it. This I didn't use as much paint on the brush. This one I used more paint. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna rinse off my brush come back with just water and make some splops here and there. Now, those splops generally aren't quite as noticeable on the darker as they are on the lighter, but that's fine. It's still gonna dry a little bit different where the water is and give it a little bit of texture. So when it's dry, I'll, I'll hold this up again so you can see it. For right now, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because you're gonna do the same thing on all the rocks. You're just gonna come in with different shades of brown here and there, randomly on your rocks. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of that light uh, tan color as well, um, just so that your rocks have some variance between them. They're not all the same, you know, same brown right next to each other all the way across. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit while I fill those in. You go ahead and do the same thing on yours. If you wanna pause it while you do that, um, certainly do that. And I will be back at regular speed here in just a minute, okay? Okay, I'm not quite done with my rocks because I wanted to show you something else as well um, when you're making or wanting to make texture in your rocks. Um, you can, in addition to touching the tip of your brush with water on it to create, hold this up, you can maybe see these now. You can see where I touched the water, just the tip of the brush and the water kind of bloomed out there right there on that one there on that one 
that's what helps you get the texture, but there's another way you can do it as well. Um, you can go back in, if you've got more than one color of brown or you've mixed up shades of brown, um, you can go in with your initial color and then instead of touching it with the brush with water, you can touch it with the brush from the other brown. So what I mean by that is, um, if we come in with this one, let's say, and you'll notice on the, the sped up section there, I did use the dryer, uh, my heat gun to dry this a little bit because they weren't drying fast enough and I didn't want to have a lot of them bleeding together. You can see I got a little bit of that here where the darker one bled into the lighter one. Um, I don't want a lot of that because rocks typically don't bleed into each other. Um, but I just took a little bit of water and tried to spread it out a little bit so it wasn't too bad and, and I'm just going to leave it. It's As with most of the things I do, this is not um, a technically correct painting in that these aren't what rocks actually look like. <laughs> It's a, rep it's a graphic representation. It's a whimsical representation. So I I'm not going to worry about that too much. It, it, it still adds to the different shade variances in the rock. So I've got this one done. And I'm going to go grab a little bit of that light tan, that buff titanium color from my Artistic Isle set, and put just a little bit of that on the tip instead of plain water. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of dot it here and there. Then I'm going to rinse it off and then I'm going to come back with plain water and go right over the top of those dots and that water bloom kind of spreads out that color a little bit. If it still looks like it needs to be spread out a little bit more, just kind of tap your brush on it and move it around a little bit. And when that dries, you're then going to have the two different shades of brown, which gives you the same type of textured look as we got with just the water. Okay, so I'm going to finish these last two real quick. So if you have not finished yours, go ahead and finish your rocks real quick. And I don't want that one to be as dark as the one below it, so I'm just going to rinse off my brush and use the color that's already there from that initial stroke to move it around a little bit so I get a little bit of shade variance there. Um, there's another thing you can do with these to get a little bit of texture. Once you've got your color down, instead of splopping the water on it, just come back with a clean brush. Um, you can wipe it off a little bit so it's not real, real wet, and just run your brush through it. You can see how that picks up some of the color. And what that's gonna do is leave a little bit of a light spot there. So that also gives you some texture and dimension in your rocks by coming back and just wiping off some of that color. Okay, and we'll do this little guy. There we go. I'm going to pause this for a second, hit it with the heat gun. So if you guys have not finished your rocks, go ahead and finish your rocks and then do the same thing. Pause the video for a minute, hit it with your blow dryer or heat gun if you have one, um, just to get this dry before we go on to the next step. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. My rocks are dry. So I want to show you this real quick, um, closer up without hopefully the glare of my studio lights. And I apologize about the glare. It's cloudy here today, so the lighting in here is different than it normally is. Um, but there with those dry, you can see how much texture we've got in those rocks in appearance fairly easily. Most of them, just by coming back after you've put the color in the rock, just by coming back with a clean, wet brush and just touching the tip of the brush here and there in the rock to put some water, and that water blooms out and makes that textured look. Um, this one up top up here, 
you do this without knocking everything over. I'm not prepared to do this today, can you tell? <laughs> this one up here is the one we splopped the other color in. So instead of coming in with just a clean, wet brush, I came in with a different color and just touched the tip um, to that rock. So we got a little bit of a different color in that rock. But you can see that fairly quickly and easily we've got texture in the rocks. I've only used three different browns on this. I could have only used the same brown and just by putting different thicknesses of paint down, still gotten a variety of the browns in my rocks. Okay. So with that part done, I want to add a little bit of a sky to it and I want to add a little bit of a ground line. And I'm going to do my sky kind of like I did in uh, the original inspiration for this. It's kind of a mottled background. It's not the same shade of color all the way across, but it is just one color. So for that one, I'm going to use an indigo blue. You can use whatever color you would like for your sky, whatever shade of blue you'd like. Um, I like the indigo blue because it makes it kind of look a little bit cloudy, but I do want to show you something real quick with the indigo. Um, this is in, uh, I think it's just called indigo. Yep, indigo from Artistic Isle. Indigo blue is very, very dark. If you go straight from the pan with this, it is very, very dark. I don't want that dark. So this one I am, um, I am gonna go straight from the pan, but I'm gonna do it very, very carefully. And I'm gonna wet my background first. So I'm gonna go in with just plain water and just completely paint my background with water so that it's wet to start with because that indigo is such an intense color. I don't want that color sitting on dry paper at its full intensity because you will it's really really hard to get it to to smush around and spread around after that so i want my i want my surface wet to begin with and i'm doing just like we've done in a couple of the other paintings i'm looking for um just a real shiny sheen across the paper that tells me there's water there I'm going to get the whole thing. I am not going to go below my ground line, however. Where I had my little ground line down here, I'm not going to put water down there because that's going to be a different color. I don't want the end to go down there. I am going to put it back here, however, because the idea is that we're kind of looking through a little portal that that top rock creates sitting over the top of the other two. Okay, so with my background wet, I am gonna go straight to the pan on the indigo. However, I've got a little scratch piece of paper. I'm gonna kinda wipe my brush off a little bit on there so I don't have it too intense. And I'm gonna come in and just wipe it around. I don't want it to sit there very long, full intensity, so I'm gonna go back and get more water on my brush. And I'm just kinda pushing it around randomly. If I need more paint, I'm gonna go back to this scrap piece of paper and grab it from there instead of the pan. You could do the same thing with your palette lid if you wanted to. I just had this scrap piece of paper sitting here, so that's what I'm using. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm using plenty of water to move this around. And I just want it to be random. That gives, that gives it kind of a mottled look. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm only going down as far as my ground line. And I am making sure I'm getting all around my rocks but that it's not consistent color. A little darker in some spots, a little lighter in others. This same technique works um, regardless of which, what, what color you're using for the sky. If you're not using indigo, if you're using a lighter blue, um, the technique still works the same. It just comes out lighter, is all. I kind of like the indigo because it's a little bit of a cloudy look. And I'm going to make sure I get in here too. But again, I am trying to make sure 
that it's not one solid shade of color. And here in between these other rocks, I'm gonna go a little bit darker in here because technically that would be in shadow. So I'm gonna put just a little bit more in here and I'm just kind of, with a little bit of paint on my brush, I'm just kind of dotting it in there. Same thing up here where you've got these little gaps between the rocks. That would be in shadow because those rocks are blocking the light. So I want it to be just a little bit darker in there. That gives us a little bit of dimension. And if you wanted to, you could even run a little bit of a shadow line below this top rock if you're using something, if you've done something like this with that long rock um, running a span. So I put a little bit heavier color there and I'm just gonna come back with water and kind of bleed it out a little bit. Just so it gives me the illusion of shadow right under that top rock. Okay. So I don't have a good camera set up today, I'm sorry you guys. So you can kind of see we've got a mottled looking, almost, almost cloudy looking sky, right? Then I'm gonna come back with a green and do my ground line across here. In the Artistic Isle set, there's an olive green that I really, really like. So I'm gonna come back with that olive green because it's kind of the same tone. It's a real earthy tone like the rocks in the sky. Um, the, the brown, the sand brown from Artistic Isle and the olive green and her indigo all go together really, really well. So I am just kind of doing like I did with the sky. I'm just putting some green in there, but it's not necessarily even. It's a little bit mottled because I'm not going for, um, you know, visually correct. I'm just going for the representation of ground, maybe a little grass. I'm gonna go a little bit darker up under the rocks here because technically it would probably be a little bit darker right where they're sitting, right? There we go. So I'm gonna pause this again for a second and dry it, and then I will be back and show you how we're gonna finish this up, okay? So pause yours, um, finish your sky, your ground if you need to, give it a blow dry, and then we'll come back and finish, okay? Okay, we are dry. Hopefully everybody's dry. So you can see dry what that looks like. You get, remember that the watercolors are going to dry lighter than they look on your paper when they're wet. So where it looked like we had some, some darker spots of the indigo, they actually dried a little bit lighter, which is what I wanted. I didn't want that indigo to be really, really intense. So we've got a, a lighter look of the indigo now that it's dry, but it's still got that mottled effect in the sky. It's not the same shade all the way across. We put a little darker in between the rocks. We've got a little bit of shading that gives it a little bit of depth. Same thing right here across the bottom of this top rock. Put just a little bit darker line of the indigo and then bled it out a little bit with water so it gives a little bit of a shadow there. So I like the colors on this. I like the way the water splotches have modeled the rock a little bit, given them some texture. But I want to come back and add a little bit to this still because more is better, right? <laughs> so back to the original one that inspired this, you can see there are all kinds of, um, sorry, my camera's trying to fall over, um, all kinds of little marks on the rocks to give them some character. So that's what we're going to come back in and do with the Sharpie. And you know, what do you draw on these? Well, it's completely up to you. You can use whatever symbols and marks you like. Um, we have, where I live, we have an area not too far away that has quite a bit of petroglyphs on the rocks, and it's fun to go out and look at those and, and bring those back and use those on these sometimes. You can use little people shapes, you know, kind of make them look like, like people would have done cave drawings, like this little gecko guy over here. Um, like little pebbles in the corner of that one, just random marks on the rocks, a little crosshatch shading. So we're just going to come back and take that idea to here and do some of those types of marks on this one. 
and where you put them and how you do them is completely up to you. So I'm gonna come in on this one and maybe just make a few crack lines to go with it. And maybe a little bit of crosshatch shading down here in the bottom. There is no rhyme or reason to this, no right or wrong. You're just gonna add things on here as they look good to your eye. Again, this is, this is more of a, a whimsical looking kind of thing. So we're not gonna worry too terribly much about whether it's really correct. Put a few on that one that look like spots on that rock. And maybe on this one, we'll give it some spirals. Maybe this bottom one will be like a sun. And maybe on this guy. We'll do some little shapes like that. And maybe we'll put a little person on this one. And maybe we'll put some circles. So we've given it a little bit of um, a little bit of personality. If you want to, you can come back and color some of these things in. So for instance, I think I kind of want this little person's head to be kind of a gold yellow color. So I've got an Irish gold in my artistic aisle set. I'm gonna come back with that Irish gold and kind of put that on that little guy's head. It's not gonna stand out a lot from the rock, but that's what I want. I don't want it to be um, you know, lots of contrasting colors that, that aren't necessarily going to go together. I want them to still be earthy looking. So when that gold dries, it's not going to look a whole lot different from the rock, but it is going to shimmer a little bit in the light. Um, I've got a little bit of a, I think this is called French Vermilion. Then I'm going to come back down here on these rocks and put a little bit of that French Vermilion in. It's not a bright, bright red, so it's gonna mix a little bit with the brown, and all it's gonna do is just give it a little bit of a different tone, give it a little bit of a, a different color to make it stand out a little bit, but it's still in that earthy tone. And I think actually, I like that French vermilion, so I'm gonna do the same thing up here. And because I don't want these to be really, really bright, I'm just dotting a little bit of the color in that spot, and I'm just gonna come back with a wet brush and spread it around, okay? There we go. So with that, you can add as much or as little in terms of kind of embellishing it up a little bit. You can see what I did there as you want to. If I go back to the, the original inspiration piece, you can see I've got other things coming off of here. I, I don't I don't know what they are. They just, they showed up when I drew. <laughs> um, you know, you could put some other rocks up on top. This little guy over here. So you can do as much of that embellishing as you want on this. Put as many of those things as you like. Color them in how you want until you've got something that you're happy with. I kind of like this one for today. It's a little more a little more minimal than I usually do, um, but that's probably a good thing. Actually, I changed my mind. Never mind. <laughs> when do you stop? How much is too much? I have no idea. Um, I am going to put just a few little kind of grassy guys down here. 
just because it's kind of screaming that it needs some grass. So there we go. Um, again, nothing terribly complicated. I just took the black Sharpie and made little spiky lines across the bottom for the grass. All right. So with that, I'm going to call that one done. Like I said, you guys can embellish as much as you want. I'm going to pull this tape off real quick just so we can see what we've got. Maybe. You ever have one of those days where all of your supplies just don't cooperate with you? <laughs> Tape didn't want to come off. So there we go. There's our little rock picture. So fun, quick way to do some fun rocks, get some fun texture. Certainly not the only way to get texture in a rock. And it's not necessarily very realistic texture, but I like... The whimsical so for me that really works and it's it's quick and easy to do but it gives you an interesting look so give it a try if you like it I would love to see what you do if you feel like posting them please um, tag me at painted willow art on Instagram if you post it so I can take a look you're welcome to message them to me or email them to me if you don't want anybody else to see them I would love to cheer you on and as always, I would love it if you would follow along on Instagram. I do have Facebook and Instagram, but I'm more active on Instagram. I am at Painted Willow Art on both of them. And all of the links for everything are on my website at paintedwillowart.com. So give that painting a try and let me know what you think. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.